Team, keep it clean. You know I love y'all, right? Like, and, and I gotta let y'all know that I love y'all. And the way that I can show my love for y'all is by letting y'all know, like, look, sit down, relax. We probably gonna be here for a little while because I feel like we got a lot to talk about. So I don't know if you're gonna have to break this video up in parts, watch it at different hours of the day, watch it on different days, whatever you gotta do. But I appreciate y'all watching. Whenever you do watch, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss nothing. Because again, it's always something going on with these Ravens, man. It's always something. But anyway, um, last night, Lamar Jackson, I guess he said he did a full body workout. So he had just woken up from a nap. Um, so he was up. He was up. And he let the Twitter world know that he had been up. Um, and Steven, the, the Steven Ruiz on Twitter, um, he had put up. Uh, he said two minutes of throws from Lamar Jackson's last full game, and it was a game against the Jacksonville Jaguars. And, ooh, 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 ooh there was some bangers in that game. But anyway, uh, and we all know how that game ended. That was a heartbreaking loss. Oh, man, that was, a, that was a tough one. But anyway, Lamar Jackson, he had quote tweeted the clips of that game, and he said, this game, and he put a sad face. He said, replay, replay, bruh. And that was a game that Lamar Jackson, he took that loss very, very hard. Very, very hard, as we all know. I mean, we took the loss very, very hard because that was just like, ah, oh, it was right there. The Ravens were up big. The Jaguars came back. Raven, y'all know the end. And then there was that super long field goal, Justin Tucker. If he would have made that, we would have, oh, my goodness. But anyway, um, so Stephen Ruiz, the Stephen Ruiz also tweeted. He said, this is Lamar Jackson's career stats versus the coaches of teams who have publicly said they are not interested in him. So he put up all the numbers and stuff, and Lamar Jackson also quote tweeted that. And he said, I can't wait to see you all and put a winky face. So basically saying, like, all right, all these coaches who've been publicly saying, oh, y'all not interested in me? All right, I got something for you. Um, now, somebody replied to that, and they said, uh, this is Coach Cush 0 He said, had the chance to see them in the playoffs last year, but you sat out. And, oh, we know that that was big last year because there were a lot of people that believed that Lamar Jackson, he chose to sit out instead of being out there with his teammates. And that had been circulating for a while. Um, the rumors were flying, and especially what added fuel to those rumors, or really, in my opinion, what started those rumors were John Harbaugh. We know John Harbaugh. I was just talking to my guy, Agent Bond 0 about this on Twitter a couple minutes ago. Uh, and he brought up how John Harbaugh, he knows John Harbaugh. We all know John Harbaugh is very vague when it comes to injuries. And that was no different with the whole thing with Lamar Jackson. Uh, my point of view, I, I said I, I wish that Harbaugh would have just said, if he knew that Lamar Jackson was done, I wish he would have just said, hey, Lamar Jackson is done for the year. That's a wrap. It's over. His season is done. Um, because that would have let us know, that would have let the media know, that would have let everybody know, okay, Lamar Jackson, he can't play this year. Now, on the flip side, on the business side of things, I get why you'd be like, hey, well, hey, we, we, Lamar's week to week. They did the same thing last year, and he was done. But they say Lamar's week to week uh, because that keeps fans interested, that keeps hope alive for Lamar Jackson returning. So that keeps all eyes on your team watching and waiting to see, hey, is Lamar Jackson going to come back this week? Could this be the week? And that, that, like that helps. So I get that too. But if they knew that he was done, I, I wish they would have said he was done. Now, another possibility could have been like, hey, Harbaugh didn't know if Lamar Jackson was truly done or not. Because there were rumors that Lamar... Uh, he was going to his own doctors and not the Ravens doctors. And if those rumors are true, I mean, especially after everything that's come out over the past couple of months, especially when it comes to Ravens team doctors, I could see why he would do that. But either way, I just, um, and something that we talked about before too, I wish Ravens would have put everything to bed sooner uh, because they didn't. And it really was a bad look. They made Lamar look bad. And because I know a lot of people, they were like, oh, man, it's immature. When, when Lamar came out and addressed the rumor on Twitter, when he came out and addressed the injury on Twitter, he said, hey, look, I want to be out there with my guys, but my PC is, is, is not good. I, I want to be 100, and I can't do it. I can't do it. I just wish the Ravens would have addressed that before, way before Lamar did. There was one point in time when um, there were the rumors going around, oh, Lamar's not showing up for the, for the, the, the training. He's not showing up for the treatments and whatnot. Um, and that was going around for a little while. Then Ravens on BaltimoreRavens.com, they had, um, was it Mike Preston put out an article? No, they had uh, Cliff, 
Cliff. Uh, I can't think of his last name right now. But they had him put out an article. Oh, yeah, it was Mike Preston that put out uh, the article uh, saying that Lamar Jackson had been missing the treatments. Um, but then they had Clifton Brown. That's his name. They had Clifton Brown put out the article on BaltimoreRavens.com that Lamar Jackson had been making his treatments. And then uh, they, I guess well, somebody from Ravens, they tapped Mike Preston on the shoulder and said, hey, fix that. Fix that article. And then Mike Preston did a, did a 180. It was like, oh, no, no, sorry. Lamar Jackson has actually been showing up for treatments. Like, oh, okay. What is it going to be? Um, but anyway, I, I had wished that the Ravens would have addressed stuff sooner. Instead of like, oh, well, maybe he's week to week. Da, 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 da. But again, it's just it's so much that we don't know about that whole situation. But we, we saw so many people turn on Lamar Jackson, calling him a quitter, saying that he sat out. Uh, saying that he quit on his team, but Lamar Jackson addressed that. Anyway, um, Coach Cush, 0-0, again, he said, had the chance to see them in the playoffs last year, but you sat out. He was directing that to Lamar Jackson. And Lamar Jackson said, if I wasn't hurt, Lord knows we would have been hunting. You know that. Stop trying to be a comedian. So Lamar Jackson, again, letting it be known that he was hurt. So then I guess Lamar Jackson was like, you know what? Look, let, 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 let me clear this up because I've heard this about me. Heard a lot of people been saying this about me. And you know what? Let, let me clear this up right now and he said uh i don't remember me sitting out on my guys week one versus the jets to week 12 versus the broncos how come all of a sudden i sit out because of money in which i could have got hurt at any time within that time frame when we know the super bowl been on my mind since april of 2018 so there were people that were not only saying that lamar jackson quit on the team but he quit on the team because he did not have a contract and again it was circulating around like crazy. So this is Lamar saying like, hold up. That doesn't even make sense. Because if it was really about the contract, why not just sit out week one through 12? Why not just sit out from the beginning of the season? Because he didn't have a contract then. Why would he choose to sit out? All right, well, why would he choose to sit out then instead of, well, now instead of then? It just wouldn't make sense. And then he followed that up and said, let's get real. I'd rather have a 100% PCL than go out there and play horrible, forcing myself to put guys in a bad situation. Now, that's selfish to me. So, again, and this is what he said before, too, that he'd rather be 100. He'd rather be 100% instead of going out there halfway, half-stepping, and just it, it wouldn't be a good look for him. Because he feel like that would have been putting himself before the team. Because it's almost like this whole situation was like a lose-lose. Because he's hurt, obviously, so he can't play. But if he would have played, and then especially if he would have been out there hurt and playing bad and not being able to be himself and whatnot, people would have been like, oh, man, man, this dude should have sat out. He should have stayed. He should have stayed at home. So, again, it, it, it was like a lose-lose for him uh, regardless. Um, then somebody asks uh, Boats and Balls. I don't know what that word is. But anyway, somebody asks him. They say, real talk, Lamar. How come you did not travel with the team for the, for the playoff game? Because there were some games where we saw Lamar Jackson travel with the team, and then there were other, uh, other times where he didn't travel with the team. And that was a thing that a lot of people took. They were like, oh, man, he's not traveling with the team. Oh, man, he quit on his team. He's a bad leader. Oh, my goodness. Not realizing that Ronnie Stanley, there were times where Ronnie Stanley didn't travel with the team when he was hurt. J.K. Dobbins didn't travel with the team when he was hurt. Gus Edwards, like, this happened, but with Lamar, obviously Lamar is the player on the Baltimore Ravens. So he's going to garner the most attention. So I get it. But anyway, um, that was another thing too. Why isn't Lamar Jackson traveling with the team? He said, after I traveled to the Pittsburgh game, my PCL got inflated. So a few of us discussed it and I got the okay to stay so I could try and recover faster. So there you go. There you have it. Lamar Jackson just addressing everything <laughs> that people had been saying. Everything. Because that, that, that was so much of what was going on and what was going on through a lot of people's minds. Oh, Lamar Jackson quit on the team. Oh, Lamar Jackson, he ain't playing because he ain't get paid from the Ravens. Oh, Lamar Jackson not even traveling with the team. What a bad leader. And now this is him saying, oh, no, 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 no. Let, let, let me clear all of that up for you. Just so you don't have anything twisted any longer. I said, hey, I love it. And, and this was late last night. And I was like, look, I, I was thinking Lamar, like, man, it, it's too late. I ain't about to make no video on this last night. No, I'm, I was in my bed relaxed, and I looked at it. I said, oh, okay, well, okay, cool. But, yeah, we, we talk about it tomorrow. I don't feel like getting up. But anyway, um, continued uh, Hector. This guy Hector, he said, 
Um, there's no denying the Super Bowl is on your mind, considering how much you've improved. But money is clearly on your mind as well. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but you stated yourself you wanted to be a billionaire. Why does that matter to you? I will never know. But at the end of the day, I hope it works out for you and you don't forget who had you, who had to your back from day one. Oh, I guess he meant to say who had your back from day one. The Ravens is at the top of that list, despite what is being speculated. So, um, he's saying the Ravens had Lamar Jackson's back from day one. And this, this, this part right here, um, not saying that Hector's saying this, it seems like it, but not saying that he's saying this, but even if he is or is not, outside of what Hector just said, um, I see a lot of players, I mean, excuse me, a lot of people say, oh, the Ravens were the only team that drafted Lamar Jackson. He should be appreciative of that. And I'm sure he is. Like, they gave him an opportunity, he played and whatnot, did his thing out there. But people make it seem like he wouldn't have been drafted by somebody else. That he wouldn't have got picked up by somebody else. Like the Ravens were the only team that would have given Lamar Jackson a shot. And whenever I hear people say that, it just... I just hear so much entitlement. Like, oh, he should be proud that our, our organization, the Baltimore Ravens, gave him a, sh a shot. And it's like they're making it seem like he doesn't appreciate the shot that he's been given. And also, like, he would have never got a shot from anybody else. But anyway, just my two cents on that. But back to Hector. Um, Lamar Jackson replied to him. He said, who doesn't want to be a millionaire? What? And Hector says, someone who is humble and knows that money ain't everything. Money is just a tool, man. Get what you're worth. But like Biggie said, more money, more problems. And Hector took the hip-hop route, I see. And Lamar Jackson said, he said, Hector Zeroni, now I'm not humble. I understand that Biggie quote, but you might as well tell everyone in the world with a little more than someone else the same thing. If this is the case. But be blessed and love you, broski. So Lamar ended that on a positive note. Um, cause it could have gotten really ugly, but, uh, Lamar <laughs> ended on, <laughs> he ended it on a positive note. So it didn't get ugly cause it seemed like it was heading in that direction, but, um, he didn't let it. Uh, and he had also said all in all, uh, I love you all. Don't ever think I have an attitude speaking on the net. Uh, only if we losing, I don't know anyone who smiles after losing or play around. See, and that's him saying like, look, like when he loses, he be heated as we know, as we've seen. Uh, but anyway, he continued. He said, you should not play sports, bro. Uh, other than that, I'm in great spirits at all times. If you know me, you know. So shout out to Lamar. And I, I, I had asked him, like, hey, forget all the other stuff for a second. I just got to make sure you're having an LJ fun day again this year. And to that, he did not respond. So, okay. But I did see it on, the, on, the, on his uh, fan page that it's going to be, I think it said on July 8th of this year so i got my question answered but anyway um <laughs> that was that so calais campbell calais campbell and we're gonna talk about this a little bit later probably too but calais campbell was like hey look if lamar if lamar's out then i'm out too because the falcons they end up signing calais campbell but one of my guys my guy jt he said he feels like the falcons are actually um Doing negotiating with Lamar With everything that they're doing He said they're negotiating with Lamar in plain sight And Initially I was like Hmm Because the Falcons were one of the first teams I think they were the first team On their, their official Twitter account There was a report that came out that said the Falcons Oh they're not going to be pursuing Lamar Jackson And the official Twitter account and you, Twitter accounts like team Twitter accounts They never do this ever but there was a report, I forgot what reporter said it, but the reporter put, hey, Falcons are not going to be pursuing Lamar Jackson. And the Atlanta Falcons, they retweeted it. Team, team accounts, they never do anything like that. Ever. Ever. So I was like, oh, that's, that's weird. That's really weird. And obviously it's been extremely weird how so many teams and reports have come out with teams saying, oh, we're not going to be pursuing Lamar Jackson. And it's like... It's like a, a, people have talked to different GMs and head coaches and whatnot, and it's like teams and, and coaches and whatnot, front office people are, have been almost going out of their way, going out of their way to let it be known how much they will not be pursuing Lamar Jackson. And, but my guy JT, when, when he said that initially, I was like, mm. 
But then I thought about it. I was like, wait a minute. It actually kind of does make some sense. Because if we remember, if we go back a little before uh, free agency officially started, it was a report that the Falcons and the Ravens were very close with trade talks when it came to Lamar Jackson. That was a report. And I know some people believed it. Some people didn't want to believe it. But that was a report. The Falcons and the Ravens were very close when it came to trade talks. They were very close. But obviously, nothing happened. Um, but uh, Arthur Blank, I think it was, he came out, I think it was yesterday, and he talked about Lamar Jackson's injury history, that, that his injury concerns with his style of play. Um, and he said it's a, it's, it's a different scenario than it was with Deshaun Watson. Um, so with him saying that, it was it was interesting. It was, I was like, okay. And, and then, uh, of course, they recently got, or they, today they just got Calais Campbell. And Calais Campbell, he continues to talk about how he wants to win a Super Bowl and whatnot. He wanted to win a Super Bowl. He's going to Atlanta. That, that's where he headed to? Oh, I don't know about all that, my friend. I think, hey, they must have cut that check right. But then at the same time, my guy brought out, he said that uh, Atlanta said that they are comfortable with their QBs. Uh, that is a different feeling from feeling good about your QBs. So it's something to think about. It, it is something to really, really think about uh, when it comes to Lamar Jackson. Um, mm, that would be something. I know Jeff Zrebic uh, in an article that he had posted recently, um, he talked about how the Falcons, their offensive coordinator, is one of the best in the league. And he talked about some of the best fits for Lamar Jackson. And he talked about uh, how their offense, offensive coordinator is one of the best in the league and what he would be able to do over there. It, it would just be a really, really good fit. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. Again, with a lot of this stuff, we just we really won't know until we know. Now, um, Josina Anderson, um, she addressed uh, the Odell Beckham Jr., all the talk surrounding him. Because, uh, obviously, yesterday, uh, and we, of course, talked about it, um, Justina Anderson reported that Odell Beckham Jr., he was going to be talking to some different owners uh, over in Arizona. That's where he trains at, um, and that's where the owners' meeting is at. Um, but he was going to be talking to some people over there, uh, just talking, having some conversations. And she mentioned the Baltimore Ravens. That were going to be one of the teams that he was talking to. <laughs> and we know that the Ravens, this whole Odell Beckham Jr. and Ravens thing has been going back and forth for a long time. A long time. I already told y'all, like, I'm not getting my hopes on it. I think it'll be nice. be a nice addition, especially if he is 100% health, healthy and, and everything is cleaned up um, the right way. But I'm not, I'm not getting my hopes up. I'm not. I, I would like for it to happen, along with another receiver, too, but we'll see. Uh, but anyway, she said um, that your team, like, some, somebody asked her. Uh, they said, 90% of us Ravens fans thought that Josina Anderson misspelled Baltimore, including myself, because in the report yesterday, she said, built more. She said that uh, Odell Beckham Jr. was going to be meeting uh, in Biltmore uh, with the Ravens. And, yeah, a lot of us did think that. Um, and he said, sorry, Justina Anderson, uh, Ravens in Biltmore, Arizona, are way too close to Baltimore. Uh, if you're talking about the Ravens without the Arizona behind it, Biltmore. Uh, and she replied to that. She said, yes, as in the Biltmore Hotel in Arizona. And she said, no worries. Your team is putting in a noteworthy and competitive effort to add a top flight receiver for Lamar Jackson and their new offense under Todd Munkin, period. So that, that was significant too with this whole thing. It's funny, a, a lot of people, um, I saw some people say that last night with Lamar Jackson, they were like, oh, Lamar Jackson answering uh, Ravens fans' questions? Oh, yeah, yeah, he's staying for sure. You are definitely going to be a Baltimore Raven this year. And we'll see, we'll see. I, I still got my doubts, um, but we'll see. Um, but with Josina Anderson saying this, that the Ravens are putting in a noteworthy and competitive effort to add a top flight receiver for Lamar Jackson. She didn't just say um, Odell Beckham Jr. She said they're putting in a noteworthy and competitive effort to add a top flight receiver. All right, Ravens. Let's see. Let's see. Because we know the Ravens are the kings of trying at the wide receiver position. We know the Ravens are the kings of almost. 
we know they are the kings of hey we tried but it, it just we just didn't get it done let's see let's see what happens again not getting my hopes up for anybody I get my hopes up for DeAndre Hopkins. Not get my hopes up for Odell Beckham Jr. Not get my hopes up for definitely not for Mike Evans. <laughs> like I, that's my wish list, but I know that ain't happening. But let's see, let's see. Another off season, hoping that they would do something like that. But hey, we'll see. But that stuck out to me. But also when she said for Lamar Jackson and their new offense under Todd Munkin. Period. So um, by her saying that, the way that she said it. Um, she obviously Harbaugh and they the, the Ravens. I'm sure they don't want Lamar Jackson to go. And of course, the report came out yesterday that if they got the right offer, and, and that was actually from Jeff Zrebic's article uh, in the Athletic, if the Ravens got the right offer for Lamar Jackson, then they could trade him. Like, yeah, they'd be interested in trading him if they got the right offer. And I mean, yeah, that's that could be said about a lot of players and a lot of quarterbacks even. But um. That would like make it seem like the Ravens are really, really confident in Lamar Jackson being that guy. It would make it sound like they're, they're really, really planning on Lamar Jackson being that guy. Will he be that guy? We don't know. We don't know. I hope he can be. But again, like I said, I, I got my doubts. But hey, my doubts could end up being wrong. If Lamar end up, ends up staying. Uh, or hey, whatever happens Whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen I know that That's what my boy Kev told me the other day He said hey Whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen that's, that's true That's right That's real Whatever's gonna be is gonna be And we'll see when we get there um, But anyway I love y'all Team Keep It Clean I appreciate y'all uh, Thank you for watching I don't know if you had to break the video up It did go a little long It didn't even really go too long It went a little long but yeah, man, I just had to make sure we got, we talked about everything that we wanted to talk about. I love y'all so much. I appreciate y'all. I know some of y'all have sent questions from subscribers. We got them. We got them. So just be, be patient, please. Even though I know y'all already are. So thank you. I hope y'all have a really, really great day. And like, maybe Lamar Jackson will be. Maybe he won't be. We don't know. But we out.